Hi everybody, welcome back to my shop. When we last left, we were finishing up the cabrio legs for our table. Got all my legs completed, um, set off to the side and, and ready to be assembled. Before we assemble this table though, there are a few details, and that's really what this episode is gonna focus on, is the details that turns this from a shaker table into a Queen Anne table. Obviously, the legs being the biggest detail to differentiate the style. But the other thing is these uh, scrolled aprons that you see so often in the Queen Anne style. Really, the Sima curve, Sima curve, depending on who you talk to, this, uh, this S-shaped curve is really one of the defining elements of the Queen Anne style. So I went ahead and put two S-curves on the side aprons meeting in this point. And I didn't want to do the exact same curve and shape on the front. So I added an additional bow in the front, and if you were to, to look back at the piece that this is inspired from that I found in the Baltimore Museum of Art, you can see a similar shape where this kind of um, rosebud, if you will, comes down right in the middle. Laying this out was really just a matter of uh, sectioning out the, the apron, defining the, the halfway point, knowing that this halfway point would be the apex of the center curve, and then defining the halfway points uh, between this space, in other words, the quarter points, that would be the, the apex of this um, valley here and mirrored on this side. So I, I made up a template that was half half of this pattern and then just flipped it over in order to draw it out. And then, just using a coping saw, uh, went in and cut the whole thing out. So now I need to clean it up. I'm sorry I didn't capture the coping saw work, but it's coping saw work. There's nothing really, really fascinating about it. Anyway, uh, let's come down here to the bench and we'll clean up all these curves using a, a series of rasps and then finish it off with a scraper. Now notice as I'm working this with a rasp, this is my outward face. So any tear out that I get in working across the grain will be on the inside of the piece. The other thing, uh, kind of a trick if you will, with some of these Queen Anne pieces with these scrolled aprons, a lot of times the apron is, is beveled toward the inside. And you can see I've got this, the handle end higher and I'm putting a slight bevel in here. And what that does is kind of relieve some of the thickness and gives it a much more delicate appearance. As you look at it from the side, this edge here will be that much sharper because the back, the thickness is kind of tapered away. You don't want it to appear real thick and chunky because again, one of the hallmarks of the Queen Anne style is very delicate flowing lines. So don't be afraid to lean into it a little bit, if you will, and put a little bit of bevel on the pieces. It's about where I need it, roughed out. So I'll switch over to a finer rasp and uh, further refine the curve. These Auru rasps really work so smoothly. They leave a nice cut too. This is a number nine Auru. Now my goal here is to shape and get the curve nice and flowing. It's not really so much to get it perfectly cleaned up and beautiful, because you know, this is the, it's the bottom of the piece here, and no one's gonna see it, except the other woodworkers and furniture conservators who come along and crawl under your work. But what I don't want is, you know, as I was coming at this with a scroll saw and I was making you know, relief cuts as I work my way through, it left kind of a, you know, curve that bounced and jumped along. I wanna make sure that it's nice and flowing throughout. So, that's really what this work is about. Again, not really coming in and, and you know, cleaning it up and making it smooth and beautiful. Although, if you wanna go that far, by all means, knock yourself out. Now I'm gonna turn my attention back to the top rail and I just need to cut the dovetail and uh, you know get it fitted into the top of the carcass. So just uh, here at the bench hook, cutting the tail parts and I'll take it over to the carcass. I've got the front clamped so that the aspect is square 
and then I'll mark my pen locations just using a marking knife. It's pretty simple work, but you want to make sure your marks are deep so you can see them. So I bring it over here to the saw and I'll make my cuts. And this is really just following the lines. I take a chisel and I knock out just a tiny little bit up to the marking line on both the end grain and on the face grain. This gives me some place to register my chisel against as I begin to chop things down. Here we go into high speed, chopping through the entire thing and uh, basically wasting away everything in that socket, getting ready to fit the pin. Here you can see I've got the socket cut into the top of the leg and uh, had to do a little bit of pairing with this chisel. I had a, a really, really tight fit. And again, uh, one of the good practices to get into is to go ahead and just slightly chamfer these inside edges to relieve it a little bit. Um, did a little bit of pairing and you can see I've got a really, really good fit there. You can see I've got a little bit of a gap right there. And this is the front shoulder. I really can't have that. Now, again, I'm not sure if the camera can quite pick this up, but right back here, I can see a little bit of my marking gauge line. In other words, I need to remove a little bit of wood right here. I need to pare that away so that I don't um, constrict this tail. And you know, it is, it is kind of a tight fit right now and it will probably loosen up a little bit if I remove some of that, but it will also allow this gap to be pulled up. Because you know, the more this tail is being pushed out, the tighter the fit's gonna be obviously because of the natural wedging action of the dovetail. So let me come in and remove a little bit of this and we'll fix the gap on that shoulder. I'm going to just drop my chisel in that little bit of a marking gauge line that's left right there. And it's really the tiniest bit left. Once I get it registered in that gap, then I can just pare away. Sometimes you got to rock it a little bit to get it started. And I'll come in from the side and kind of pare that back a little bit. I don't need to worry too much about a gap appearing in the top here because again the you know the tabletop's going to go on. So sometimes if you're having trouble on this ingrain you can kind of chamfer the edge back a little bit. You know, flip the bevel down so I can get into this corner. Just kind of rock that back. <laughs> Dovetail, fishtail chisels are really great getting into these inside corners of half blind dovetails. Let me remove just the tiniest bit more right here. Again, you know, if I remove too much here and I end up with a gap, I'm really not concerned about that because obviously you're not going to see that. Let's fit it one more time. And perfect. And obviously you can see now I've got a gap there. Actually, most of it is from the chamfer that I cut, but I've managed to pull up the gap that's right here. It now fits properly and it's perfectly lined up on the front as well, which is what we're looking for. One of the other details that you'll find on a lot of Queen Anne furniture is beads. Maybe that's a cock bead molding around the drawer or a lot of times around the outside edge of the case. And in this particular instance, the piece that I'm drawing inspiration from had a bead on the corner of each leg post. So if you're um, industrious, you can build a scratch stock. If you're lazy like me, you can get one of these Veritas beading tools. Actually, to be truly honest, this was given to me as a birthday gift. Uh, thank you to my wonderful mother-in-law if she were ever to listen to this. This is a great little tool. It's essentially a scratching um, scratch stock. You can go either direction on this. Uh, I like to get it started, um, you know, get the line just started, and then you can start moving back and forth like this to really get that perfect round bead. Once I finish the bead here, I'll flip the leg 90 degrees and do it on the same corner so you get a complete rounded bead on the corner of each of the four leg posts. So now we'll do a dry fit, put everything together, and you can see a little bit better view of those corner beads. Really nice detail there, adds just a hint of a shadow line right around the corners. I've got everything fitted up nicely, all the joiner is coming together snugly, so let's put some glue on this and clamp it up. 
So of course, once you get the clamps in, show up at that square and make absolutely sure that that drawer opening is dead on square. You're gonna have a real hard time fitting your drawer later on down the line. So now I'm simply going to fit the drawer runners and I have to cut this notch in the side so that they fit nicely around the corner posts. And you can see how that fits right in there very nicely. <clears throat> this is a very simple procedure to do. Now that the table is together and glued up, you want to make sure you take it out of the clamps because the clamps are compressing the table ever so slightly. So now that it's fully cured and dried, taken out of the clamps, I've got a more accurate representation of the internal dimensions here. So I've got a piece of, of ash here that's actually left over from building this bench. And I'm going to run it in and just really set it in there. And you take your handy dandy wood whisperer pencil and mark the front dimension. And then I'm also going to come in and I'm going to mark where the runner actually hits the post. I'm just going to put a little tick mark there on both sides. And now I'm taking my combination square and I've got it set for the depth right here. And I will come up and transfer this dimension. all my waste with X's and I end up with a piece that is needs to be cut off here to final length and then I need to cut out these little notches on these ends. So I'll come over here to the bench hook to take care of that and I'll use the slot, the 90 degree slot that I've already got established and pick your favorite saw. This happens to be my dovetail rip saw so I'm not you know, terribly concerned here about the quality of the cut because this is an inside piece. Although, the problem with using a dovetail saw is with such a fine pitch, it takes a lot longer to make that cut. Now, when you're ready to make this notch cut, you could certainly take a square and you could transfer the line across so you can make sure you keep it square. It's not hugely important because again this is an internal structure. So what I'm going to do is really just eyeball it. I'm going to set the, the saw where my cut line is and then using the reflection in the saw you can see as I move it back and forth the reflection changes. So first of all I want the reflection to be straight across so the, the cut is plumb, and then I also want it to be square. So you can really adjust it, and I'm gonna block the image here with my fingers to get this cut started. So if you want, you can get the cut started first, and then just look at that reflection, and get it where you, it looks square to you. Actually, a little off now. So I'm going to reestablish that. Take that cut down, and if you noticed, I went a little bit out of out of plumb. And if you look real closely here, you can see, you know, I went a little bit out there. Not terribly worried about that. well between the legs but I am just the tiniest bit long in overall length. So what I'm going to do is come over here to the shooting board and just kind of, uh, as Mel Brooks would say, just nip the tip. That was a terrible Mel Brooks impression. And this is really just trial and error to get it to fit. I think 
That ought to do it. I'm binding a little bit. And I think it has to do with a little bit of glue squeeze out that I have in the inside corner. So uh, I do need to go in and make sure I clean that up in order to get it to fit perfectly flush. But, you know, I think you guys get the idea. It's really very easy to cut those notches. Of course, you could do this on a bandsaw, but, you know, we're doing this entirely by hand, so let's keep at it. So we've got those drawer runners cut. Let's glue them in place. And then the blocks you see on top are just doublers. These act to take up the space between the leg post and the side so that a drawer runs smoothly. You can see I've got just the tiniest bit of a reveal there, and that will also help the drawer to maintain its reveal from side to side. Next time, let's fit the drawer.